Yeah, you know, welcome back. The APC has yeah. been described as an amalgamation of strange bedfellows. Yes. The PDP is always reading yes. your good selves yes. about that fact. How will you make things work? You know, I think what is what what will make it work is because there's a common there's a burning desire, uh, as you call strange bedfellows, but there's there's, there's, there's there's a common bond that is holding us together. In this, we truly believe that there's need for a change in this country in the way things are done. I think there's need for a different approach to party politics. There's need for a different approach to governance. There's need for a different approach to service, to governance, to many issues. And, and some of these issues, we're having a common position on that. And that is why even when you ask yourself, how could you even have got this far? Because in the past, along the way, such process will have tripped, people are, and the whole process will have collapsed. Uh, registration of the party. I mean, never seen in, in Nigerian policies where people will leave a ruling party. I mean, I mean that's, that is a, that's a significant event where you leave the comfort of a ruling party. I mean, there, there's, there's comfort in a ruling party. You leave the comfort of a ruling party and you go into, into an opposition party. I think, I think people underestimate that kind of commitment and sacrifice uh, to, to be able to do that. That has happened. And in doing it, being able to actually come together and still work into a party. Yes, along the way, you've named a few states where we've had, but I think major, largely most of the states, you've still kept majority together. So uh, it's clear that there is a commitment, and, and I think that you can see that maybe, maybe, you know, people can say, it seems that there's, these guys are serious this time. It seems that there's, there's a lot of people ready to sacrifice their personal ambition for the interests of the larger party of the country. And that's what you're seeing. And it is that commitment, that motivation that is driving the process. So you talked about the ruling party now, and uh, you were one of the people who, among other things, called for the removal of the former PDP chairman, Alaji uh, Bamanga Toko. How could an individual be allowed to do so much havoc to a party before being asked to step aside. What was going on exactly, as far as you knew? You, see, you asked some of those questions that, uh, again, um, what, we, what we raised was the fact that something was going wrong. And as a party, we needed to address it. Um, we felt that the party was drifting. We felt that, yeah, the, normally they're always internal parties. It's normal. But the, with the way this was going, it was different. Um, and the warning signs, you know, something Adamawa, please, you know, let's correct it. Nigeria Governors Forum, let's correct it. The suspension of governors, no executive meetings. You know, and some of us were standing for what we felt was right in different parts of the country, not knowing that very soon, you know, we too were going to have a taste of, of, of the medicine. Our own. And, and that's what the worst, where you have local government elections coming up. You've gone to primaries. You've elected uh, your um, candidate. And then the night before the election, somebody in Abuja party head office just writes names of 16, 16 uh, chairmanship candidates and 193 councillors who have not, did not participate in any primary process and submits it to the state candidate and say, these are the candidates of the party. I mean, in, in my own knowledge and history of being in PDP, such an event has never happened. And, for, and if you understand, for people in politics, especially local government elections, what is key to the grassroots. And the grassroots is saying that I, I, I sat down my ward here in a local government here in Kwara. We came together, we did a primary, and we said, Yaya is our candidate. And the day before election, somebody that has nothing to do with our constituency says Tunde is the candidate, and so be it. You, you just lose the total confidence of, of, our, of our people. Now, to, to blackmail a lot of us, they, they said, oh, no, there's nothing wrong with the chairman. Oh, it's, these guys are just rebels, or they're just troublemakers. And we said at that time that, no. And we said that, you know, time will judge us, and, and history will be kind of us. And we didn't have to wait that long. Even after we left the party, at least we would have thought after we leave the party, they said, ah, you know, they've gone. Let's carry on with, uh, because we're happy with the way the party is. It was these this people that were complaining. And you also what happened not long after that. Um, you know, they again acted too late. And so, and 
same reasons we gave, same reasons they gave, and and came to Atma. So you wonder, as you rightly said, why why will you allow such to happen? I think it's very responsible. I mean, the parties are institutions that you know must be must be guided in the sense that you know um, people built it to a certain level, handed it over to someone at the point of time, and that trust is also to guide that institution, you know, and ensure that you also you, you keep it intact. But unfortunately, that was not the case. There's what's been, well, what we assume is accounting error in the NNPC. What do you call it? Accounting error. I like that. I've never heard that one before. <laughs> That's what it is. I've never heard that one before. Accounting error. Accounting error. error. Okay, I remember that. How error. can this happen in 2014? Something like this happened. I don't know. What at what point it's, it's, it's $10 billion dollars missing. At another point, it's $24 billion missing. It's $49 billion missing. How can this happen? Let me put it this way. that um, <laughs> As you are aware, the, 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 if that's what it is, as you are aware, the Senate Committee on Finance, which I'm a member of, we have been inv investigating the matter. Um, my own simple view is that whether it's 20, 10, uh, one, I don't think this country presently uh, can even afford for even one billion to be missing. Uh, and I think that if, if, if money is missing, that you know, there must be a commitment to get to the bottom of it. And as I said during, during the Senate hearing, and I'll repeat it many times, this is not an issue that was brought by the Senate or brought by opposition um, within the executive itself. And if you go back and look, the letter that was written by the Governor of Central Bank was written in September, sometime in September. And where people have all have been seen some level of confidence is that after the letter was written, it was not in, in the public domain. You, neither you and I knew that letter was written. Immediately then, a serious minded government will have set up the so called reconciliation. So that by December, I think it was in December when it was now out in the journey. What would have come up is the minister would have said, oh, yes, we did get this letter, but guess what? We have reconciled, or we have done this, and these are the issues. The reconciliation only started after it became an issue in the public domain, because the papers were clear where the minister announced to say, we have now set up, we have now set up a reconciliation committee. And you get concerned that, uh, first of all, that's the first level that, that, that really comes, that, that gives you a lot of concern. Um, as you see, you know, the figures keep on changing. But there's no doubt about it that there are still amounts that have not been reconciled or accounted for. Um, and I think NMPC are still bringing figures um, to try and explain what this was, was, the reason for this, was the reason for that. And I think at the end time, at the Senate Committee on Finance, we finish our report, uh, we will we'll let the public know um, where, 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 what the real situation is. Currently, we're told that about 700 million naira is being paid on kerosene subsidy every day. Can we get the political will to remove subsidy on, on, on kerosene? Because we all know that nobody what, buys what, kerosene. What, what political will is required? What political will? Well, that's no, what they're saying. No, they're saying no, that we cannot no, remove subsidy no. on, petrol, on kerosene because the ordinary man on the street is, buys kerosene at a controlled price. But that's not true. The Constitution is very clear. The National Assembly is the only body that has the power to appropriate Section 80, Subsection 4. There is no appropriation, either in 2012, in 2013, for kerosene subsidy. There is appropriation for PMS subsidy. So there's a fundamental issue here. It's not the political will, it's the law. If there is no appropriation, how then can we go ahead and incur the expenditure? So it's a pure point of principle. And my position is that, my view is that it's an illegal act. It should stop. If going forward we want to do it, then bring a supplementary. Do you understand? And put it forward. But where there is no law supporting it, it should not arise. Now, that's first on, the, on a very strong issue of, of, of law. And you notice the Minister of Finance repeatedly is very clear on that that she does not pay for kerosene subsidy. So 
If she says she's not paying for kerosene subsidy, then who is paying for it? So who is paying for it? The petroleum. But she's saying clearly she doesn't. So that's a clear issue. Then when you go to the second point, is as you rightly say, it's kerosene subsidy. In the Nigerian, at least in P, for PMS, people are buying PMS at a subsidized price. Kerosene, you're not buying it at a subsidized price. And secondly, government is selling it to the, to the marketers at a subsidized price, 50 naira. So sh shouldn't, aren't we wondering, if, if a, a, a trader is buying at 50 naira, why the hell is he selling it to the Nigerian 150 naira? And he's not selling it, he's hiding it, he's issuing receipts. No, he's not buying at one, it's not buying at 50 because it's subsidized, it's less than 50. No, it's 50, he's buying 50 now. He buys 50. He buys 50. The, 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 so if he buys at 50. Should, no, no, no. The end user should be buying at 50. That's what that's, I'm saying. That's, that's what I'm saying. saying. But the, the, the marketer doesn't buy at 50, oh. but he's selling at 150. Why isn't he buying at 50? Because he's... He's, he's, he's supposedly he's buying at 50 and selling it, so I'll say, sorry, selling at 50, right? Now, he said at 130, 150. Ah, well. So the question you must ask yourself is that why is he selling 130, 150? Now, NNPC will tell you when this thing started, went around, and I think, you know, uh, tried to move around and said, no, everybody should be selling at 50 naira. Obviously, there must be the reason that why they're selling 150. And it's clear that there must be some cost that we don't know about, and that is why they're selling 150. So if, if the man on the street is not getting at the subsidized price, then you just put your money in private people's pockets. Do you still have presidential ambitions? Do I still have presidential ambitions? It's not something that, you know, I've been, I get this question all the time. And now I, what I tell people that it's not an issue I, I really want to discuss now because I think it belittles all the issues I'm fighting for. What do I mean by that? I give an example. In 2011, when I was talking about oil subsidy, 2011, that's four, three years before now, the black man was like, oh, it's because he has presidential ambitions. These issues I'm talking about has nothing to do with ambition. But as we people just try to, when any time you try and talk about what is right or wrong, and as I keep on saying, these issues are not personal. It's not, it's not um, as I say, I gave an example. I said, I, I, it's a bit unfortunate President Jonathan is president at this time. What I mean, unfortunately, compared to previous presidents. Uh, and some of his people say he's, he's weak. He's not weak. It's the time. If President Basanjo is president now, he, he will go through the same challenges. Why? Because the institutions have all, have all grown up a bit. The media, the, there, was, there was no social media in time of general, uh, President Basanjo. So the level of accountability was a bit less, or level of awareness. Now, when something happens before, you say, well, call the newspapers, try and kill it. You, those kind of things don't happen now. The parliaments are a bit much stronger. The judiciary is stronger. We have a global world now that people are interfering what happens. So um, this, is, this is just the change in the times that we're in today. And as such, we must be able to see it for what it is. But unfortunately, when you raise those kind of issues, um, it's, it's also bogged down to say, oh, it's because of ambition. So I, I, I try as no, much as No, that wasn't the question I asked. No, no, no that's, and that's, I'm telling you why I'm not going to answer your question, because, because uh, either way I answer that question, it belittles the issues that I'm addressing now. I want to put the issue of ambition right, right behind me. That's not what is important now, right? And because people say, oh, I'm being vocal because of my ambition. And, and that hurts, because at the end of the day, we will not make these changes that are necessary to be made. These are changes that uh, we will, and I will continue to fight for these changes in the interest of the country. And I think if we begin to, 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 to save the country 700 million every day, you know, I'll do it because it is in the interest of the country and not in the interest of any ambition. Senator Bukola Sawaki, thank you for your time. Thank you very much. And I thank you for watching. Please join us again next week when View from the Top returns. But between now and then, let's continue the conversation online at channelstv.com. Do have a good day.